With the first earnings season in 2015 kicking off today, it's time for us to pay close attention to Alcoa, the big aluminum maker that's always the first company to report, and a company that gives you vast insight into aerospace, autos, trucks, commercial construction, packaging, and even some heavy industrial machinery. I've been a huge fan of Alcoa under the leadership of CEO Klaus Kleinfeld, who's been transforming the company into less of a commodity aluminum play and more of a diversified manufacturer of high-value added aluminum products for airplanes and automobiles. Now, Alcoa reported a strong quarter after the close today, delivering a four-cent earnings beat off a 29-cent basis with higher-than-expected revenues. It was the company's best quarter in ages. So let's dig deep with Klaus Kleinfeld, the chairman and CEO of Alcoa. Hear more about the quarter and this company's prospects. Mr. Kleinfeld, welcome back to Mad Money. Hello, Jim. All right, Klaus, this was the first quarter where I feel like Alcoa is a bit like 3M, like Honeywell. You have organic growth of things that you have created. How much of your earnings, which was a nice surprise, came from things that have been invented or discovered or created since you became CEO? Oh, <laughs> uh, many of those things have a longer term, uh, and, and it's very hard to pinpoint it to one time when it starts. But we are happy with where we are, 14% revenue growth, 50% of that organic. Uh, if you just look at the last quarter, I mean, we basically showed that we are using the organic as well as the inorganic growth opportunities. We announced the acquisition of Firth Rickson and closed it, in fact, and, and Tital. We hope to close it in the first quarter. Pretty confident. And with that, that increases our portfolio on the jet engine side and in the titanium field. And at the same time, we announced things like the micromill materials, which were really total breakthrough, total breakthrough new materials, combining things that one could never combine before. Before, it was either weight or formability or strengths, and now you can get it all in one. You know, it's, uh, that's... That's, that's where we are going, and we, we have a full pipeline with these things, so this is, uh, I think, what we will continue to see. And at the same time, on the upstream side, we've been coming down on the cost right. curve, basically uh, mitigating against wherever the volatility of the markets will get us. That's the whole philosophy, and we've been talking about that, and you can see it inside of our core now. Plus, and the impact, I think, is something that the shareholder benefits right. from. You're predicting acceleration in aerospace. I'm trying to figure out what Alcoa will look like at the end of this year, where you'll have digested two key aerospace acquisitions. You see aerospace going, getting stronger. Will we be looking at an Alcoa that is primarily an aerospace and auto company with the other divisions kind of just uh, being pulled along? The good news is we love aerospace, we love automotive, and particularly as there's growth in the business, and then you see the aluminum growth on top of it because we are replacing existing materials and we are innovating. But I would not say that those are the only things we could get excited about. Just look at commercial transportation. You know, we've talked about the U.S. truck market, and it's been an exciting market it has, uh, last year, and it continues to show real nice signs of strength, which we predict for the next year. We are in it with, with, uh, with wheels, for instance, which is a very, very nice business. Look at the North American building and construction market, right? right? The building and construction market finally came back last year. We projected to continue to grow further in, in, in this year, and we have a full range of products for, for this market. And finally, uh, I don't know whether you saw that somewhere the, hidden in the, in, the in, 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 in the message there. Yeah, exactly. The turbines. Turbines. Yeah, how did that I mean, happen? We, we I mean, turbine has believe... been such a drag. What is, <laughs> is that natural gas being the big natural gas shift occurring around the world? No, no, no. It's actually, it's actually smart management of some of the OEMs. And uh, there's been innovation that has finally attracted the desire uh, from customers to invest and change their portfolio. It's m m largely the, the, big, the big new uh, high, highly effective, highly efficient gas turbines. That's one thing. And the second thing is that companies have been very creative in finding ways how to revamp existing products where we actually benefit a lot from because most of it actually uh, requires that you shift out a lot of the internals. I mean, the blades, the veins, right. and those type of things. That's the stuff that, that we make. So right. you're right. You caught it. That's a very, very nice thing that we're seeing there, finally. Okay. Now, the, a lot of people have been mo bemoaning the fact that oil's coming down. Alcoa has a different thesis. When our energy costs come down, your earnings go higher. 
Well, you uh, actually, um, yes. I mean, they go di higher directly because uh, we, we directly benefit from it. But I think that the bigger aspect here is what I think we've been hearing from the experts in the last month, where it looks as though this seems to be not something that's just fluctuating, but it could stay around for a little while, you know. And uh, I mean, the predictions that I've seen from renowned economists are that they say if oil stays at $40 a barrel, you could get a boost boost for the worldwide economy, that's uh, between 0 0.4 to 0.8% additional growth. Um, and that's, that's obviously wonderful and it would okay. be a nice thing to happen. Well, well are we going to put to rest now that Illumina is on fire, now that you see your cost structure go down, we put to rest the idea that Alcoa has to break up? <laughs> well, look, I mean, you see the, the, the logic that, that we have. We really are firing on both cylinders. I mean, we've always said we have a two-pronged strategy. One is we want to build out on what we call the multi-material innovation lightweight powerhouse, and that's what we are doing. That shows the results in the midstream and the downstream, lots of it with innovation and growth there. At the same time, we've said, let's make sure that we also get the maximum value out of our upstream business. I can't predict where LME prices are going to go, where premiums are going to right. go. But what I can predict is if we are low enough on the cost curve, one time I make more money, the other time I make less money. Right. And the question that we're asking ourselves all the time, can other owners add, add more value to it? We look at this all the time, and uh, at this point in time, we've come to the conclusion this is a very, right. very good combination, and it works. Last question. Uh, can you make uh, enough of the uh, F-150 metal for every car company that wants it right now? <laughs> Well, we as Alcoa uh, are catering basically to the whole industry. The, whole, the industry has been a little tight on this. Our philosophy is relatively simple. We believe it's not just about uh, making the same material. That's why we announced in December uh, our micro mill, our new micro mill based uh, materials. That's, uh, the, the, the logic here of Alcoa is we want to be ahead of everybody. We want to have products that create value for the customers and that in the the end also create value for us and this is where we broke the code usually when a designer right. came the, the the designers the car designers knew if I want more strengths I get more weight I get less formability we found a formula where you where you have less weight more formability and more strengths you know and that's a formula that pretty much every car designer has been looking for this is our philosophy cool. there and at the same time we have a nice automotive business that's growing and doing fairly well and you see some of it already in the fourth quarter numbers all right well congratulations Klaus Kleinfeld chairman of Alcoa for your best quarter in many, many years. Good to see you, sir. After the break, I'll try to make even more money.